actually target these ISIS terrorists. Then you have Turkey, our supposed allies, bombing the Kurds who are fighting ISIS. You have Saudi Arabia coming out and saying that they're going to threaten the military option in Syria unless Assad steps down. Again, siding with ISIS, they want to overthrow Assad. And this was the very origin, this was the very cause of the migrant crisis in the first place, which is now impacting Germany and Sweden. The angry foreigner, your comments on that? Uh, yeah, that's something that really annoys me about the whole debate, especially in the media and the political debate, is that everybody is talking about right now. We need to take in a bunch of refugees right now. When when nobody's talking about why these people are running to begin with, like what caused this crisis, it's basically irresponsible politics. It's us voting for politicians that contribute to wars. You know, Sweden's government has also uh, financially supported terrorists. I mean, we, we, we supported the uh, Al-Qaeda allies, the Syrian Recovery Trust Fund, are uh, allied with Al-Qaeda, ta- tactically allied, and we gave them several millions. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, I think it's short-sighted and one-sided that nobody's thinking about the future, like how we're going to take care of these people, and nobody's thinking of, well, how did we get to this situation, the past? They're just thinking right now we need to pour, import people. And uh, that's that's really bad. There is no nuance whatsoever in the public debate. OK, we've got another guest coming up, but angry foreigner. I just wanted to give you the opportunity here in the final few minutes to um, tell people about your YouTube channel, how they can subscribe to that, how they can get further information about your videos. Yeah, well, just go on YouTube and type in Angry Foreigner and you're going to see my channel. And just click subscribe. I'm going to be making a lot more uh, English videos. My next video is going to be pretty long, 50 minutes. It's going to be about the Islamization of Sweden. And I also got a video coming tomorrow about how we choose to keep rapists but deport people, immigrants who actually have a job. So there's, there's a lot to look forward to. Okay, the angry foreigner, thanks for joining us on the Alex Jones Show. We'll be sure to check out your channel for future updates. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay, there goes the angry foreigner. We're going to switch now to our next guest again. Fascinating topic. It's not one that we've explored that deeply here on the radio show. I've made a few videos about it. But that topic is Gamergate. And this is the use of video games, the hijacking of the video game industry for purposes of brainwashing and re-education. And we've got a guest, Theodore Morgan Major, who is a researcher with SEAL Team 6, which is a research team focused on the gaming industry and the Gamergate controversy. Theodore, welcome to the show. We've not got Theodore yet. Okay. So we're going to talk to Theodore in a second, but I've made videos about this. Again, it's quite a technical subject. Gamergate is how people within the gaming industry, basically social justice warriors, extreme left-wingers, came to the conclusion, and this is backed up by the evidence. Yesterday we saw a poll, trust in mainstream media has dropped, has plummeted to an all-time low. So people don't believe what they see on mainstream news. People don't believe what they see in Hollywood. We had propaganda placement in Hollywood for decades. Now people have got wise to that. These social engineers, and that's what it is, it's a program of social engineering, it's a program of re-education. They've abandoned these traditional media outlets, which are failing in terms of their influence, in terms of their reach. Of course, if the mainstream media gets together and decides We're going to coalesce around this common narrative around a certain issue. For example, you know, the migrant invasion is a humanitarian benefit for Europe. Then the power of those mainstream media outlets combined is still a force to be reckoned with. But if it's completely, you know, diluted, they don't have individual power. So they have to resort to other outlets to have that social engineering impact because more and more people are tuning out of the mainstream media. I'm going to go to our guest now, who is a researcher into the Gamergate controversy, Theodore Morgan Major. Welcome to the show. Nice to have uh, be aboard. 
Mm. Now let's just sum up Gamergate, okay? What's Gamergate? Why does it matter? Why should people care in two minutes? Go ahead. Uh, Gamergate is an ongoing event set with various groups competing against each other. Um, one group, but you have people that are interested in ethics and games journalism, which most are aware of. You have one group that are the sock dust loonies that have been trying to push their far left agenda onto games. That's another obvious one. Another one are some of the ones that are not far left loonies that are sick and tired of said far left loonies and are ended up siding with Gamer Gates. Um, then, of course, there's trolls messing with both sides of the field. It's a bit of a a complete mess. If you really wanted to try and cover it, it would be uh, more akin to trying to cover a bloody uh, war. Uh, an information war. People end up trying to bring it to something else, but that's what I think it is. And this basically arose out of the fact that the gaming media or elements of the gaming media around a year ago or just over a year ago basically came out and said that gaming was dead. And bear oh, in yeah. mind again, Gaming is the most profitable entertainment industry in America right now. It surpasses movies. It surpasses anything else. So they came out and declared that that was dead. They need to hijack that for social engineering and bring it to a point where games, video games, are used for you know, conditioning. And we'll get oh, yeah. into what kind of conditioning they want after the break. Um, we're going to go to our guest after the break again taking your calls here on the Alex Jones Show. We'll get the number for you uh, in a moment. But we're talking to Theodore Morgan Major. Now, he's a researcher with SEAL Team 6. This is an organization that has delved into the Gamergate controversy. They've connected the dots, not only with the agenda, which is to use video games for social re-education. And again, people say, feminists have no power, just ignore them. You know, they have no influence whatsoever. This is a key industry in which they are implementing their influence amongst the next generation. This is key. We'll be back on The Alex Jones Show after the break. Stay tuned. We're back live. It's The Alex Jones Show with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, top story on Infowars.com right now, Kurt Nimmo. New York Times begins propaganda campaign against Russian airstrikes. That's right. Actually trying to kill frigging ISIS terrorists. That's bad. No, we should arm the Syrian rebels, the so-called moderate rebels, who are giving their weapons to ISIS, who are defecting to ISIS. So the New York Times, on the day that Russia announces that it's trying to airstrike and actually kill ISIS militants, what the Obama administration has failed to do for over a year, they're now basically saying that that's wrong because they haven't targeted the right area even though they're trying to defend this strategic air base, which is fundamental to the survival of the Syrian government, which is taking on ISIS. Again, illustrating the point that the Obama administration, that the mainstream media, in the guise of the New York Times, doesn't want ISIS to be eliminated because they're basically in support of Assad being overthrown. And that has been the case for two, three, four years supporting Al-Qaeda linked rebels who have defected and given their weapons to ISIS. So Putin's bad for trying to kill ISIS. Obama's good for arming rebels who give their weapons to ISIS. That's a narrative that the New York Times is trying to make us swallow right now. But we're talking about Gamergate with Theodore Morgan Major, who is a researcher with SEAL Team 6. Now, Theodore, you wrote this um, PDF file, which basically outlines the case. To summarize the findings, and I quote from the PDF file, the purpose of declaring gamers dead, and this is what we discussed before the break, and to normalize gaming among society was to change public perception to allow lobbying efforts down the line to succeed. As it turns out, games are to be repurposed as learning aids and eventually used as the primary tool of indoctrination in schools. So explain why they're repurposing video games as re-education tools for the public while television news, while Hollywood, while Hollywood films decline in influence. Because the gaming media currently is in a bubble. It's built on a lot of hype. It's built on uh, a lot of things that are going to come crashing down in uh, upcoming years. The problem that, that they're facing is they need to be able to reach a new audience. And what they're going to try and do 
is they're going to try and reach out to, to EdTech, which they've been doing for a while. They're going to try and reach out to the defense. They've done that a little bit, too. But the reason they're doing this is because they're selling it to make money. That's the primary goal of these. A secondary goal is a lot of them are share this ideology to begin with, this uh, progressive ideology that just just so happens to uh, support other interests. It's uh, it's multiple groups. One of them is basically um, how to word it, Microsoft, and that particular crew. They've been uh, putting a lot of money in with um, certain interest groups to promote this particular bit. Um, man, I'm doing bad at this. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, just, I just talk about what examples of social engineering are they pushing? From my perspective, it seems like video games are really successful right now as merely a form of entertainment, right? It's the biggest grossing entertainment industry in America right now. So why the need financially to hand this over to these groups who are only interested in pushing their political agenda when it seems like the gaming industry in general doesn't need them? They're pretty successful without them, right? They are. Uh, last that I checked, it was around a $90 billion a year industry. Yeah, and we'll talk about that after the break. We're going to take callers as well. This is The Alex Jones Show Live. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Infowars.com. Stay tuned. Back live with The Alex Jones Show this Wednesday, September 30th edition. We're talking to Theodore Morgan Major, who is a researcher with SEAL Team 6, a research team focused on the gaming industry and the Gamergate controversy. If you don't know about Gamergate, it's basically been raging for over a year. This is an example of how social justice warriors and left-wing activists have hid their agenda behind other guises. So again, you know, television news, Hollywood, we've had propaganda placement for decades in those two industries. It's not as successful as it once was. In fact, we've got the polls. Trust in mainstream media is at a record low. So people are no longer believing what they see on the television news. They're no longer believing the narratives that they see within Hollywood movie scripts, within television scripts. Some people would argue that, you know, Americans love to be lied to, that it doesn't even matter whether trust is at an all-time low or not. But this has caused consternation amongst the social engineers, amongst the control freaks, because their audience is declining in those genres and they're becoming less trustworthy. So now they've moved into different genres, different industries to try and maintain and uphold that social engineering in terms of, you know, social justice warrior, left wing narratives that they need to uphold to continue and prolong their power. That's basically what it centers around. And Gamergate is a perfect example of this. This is how left-wing activists and feminists have seized control of an industry which should be based around consumer demand and entertainment, and they've turned it into this, basically a platform for re-education. And that's insidious. That's North Korea-like. We shouldn't have people with political agendas involved in entertainment. If it's completely open source and they, you know, admittedly, you know, display that to the, to the full public view, then that's fine. But when they're doing it behind the scenes, when they're hiding it behind this supposedly neutral plat platform, then it becomes a major problem and we need to talk about it. So Theodore Morgan Major, just describe how they're using video games for political re-engineering. What messages are they putting within the, these video games to push their political agenda? And why should we be concerned about that? Um, specifically, they are citing their own work. They are pushing together into groups. <sighs> Damn it. They have been engaged in cytogenesis, which is basically citing each other's work, which ends up eventually getting fed to uh, Wikipedia as people end up knowing how Wikipedia works. It ends up taking citations from supposedly credible sources. Anyways, what they've been building that up their cases from there to get government money, 
to produce paper.